What's happening troops? Welcome back to another video here on the Sharp Dev channel. In this video today, we're going to talk a wee bit about Rangers versus Galatasaray. And we've got your man CJ Novo on the channel. How are we doing, mate? I'm all right, mate. It's been a while. How's things? Good. It has very good after last night, but it has been what? a while. It's been months and months, I think, since you've been on the channel. I know it has, mate. At least about six months. Aye. It's been a wee bit of time. I'll let you, you keep back, yourself. Friend. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Keeping yourself busy, mate. I am with that, and I'm, I'm, I spent basically all night bouncing last night. I don't think I've had any sleep, so if I look like, just like a ghost, that's what it is. Aye. What was your initial thoughts, bro, when we got uh, Galatasaray in the draw? Well, I thought, when, especially when I seen it, because I was kind of watching the, the thing live and everything like that, I went, right, Tottenham and Galatasaray is by far the two hardest ones. You, you, you kind of knew that. But I was actually <laughs> mere fancy in Spurs, believe it or not, because at that point, they were starting to stick a wee bit, and you came with... Jose is like, he's, he's, he's kind of a maverick. He doesn't really care about certain top competitions. So I thought, well, that might be... Then I seen Galatasaray and I was like, oh, Christ, they're going to be up for it because mm -hmm. we know what they've been going for. They've been going for a trans transition in time themselves. So we know they want to actually do well. Eh? They've not really had that moment in Europe now for a very long time. You can't how passionate the fans are. Let's say passionate. <laughs> very vocal. Absolutely. Uh, oh, they're vocal, all right. Uh, it just got to the point where I wasn't even hitting translate anymore. I just seen so many tweets, and I was like, I'm just going to pretend they're saying nice smile. Uh, That's what I'm going to say. The amount of screenshots that I get sent last night, like for Twitter and stuff like that, was just absolutely ridiculous for their fans. Yeah. But to be fair to them, man, they are they are, they are involved. Like, oh, see, yeah. see fans in that were allowed into these games, and it was a double legger. Wow. Oh, like, my God. Just, oh, my God. It would have been unbelievable. The atmosphere, home and away, would have been class. It really would have been. It would have been very like leggy last year because remember how passionate and strong they fans were. Yeah. Galatasaray, I'm sure, would have had that absolutely bouncing. But I said that yesterday's video. The only thing that was missing for yesterday and everything and every aspect of football was the fans. But that's the way the world is right now. Eh? But the fact yeah. that the team's gone out there and putting smiles on our faces and distracting us and what a smile it was. I know. I intentionally didn't watch your video last night so that I could kind of hear, I know, offended, but... Just so I could hear your opinion, kind of first, like, off the bat in this video today, because I knew we were going to do it. But just to touch on my thoughts going into the Galatasaray game, because I did watch your preview video, which was class, like, breaking down Figuli and Falcao and all that sort of stuff. But obviously, I noticed there, a lot of them are players that maybe have passed their peak, weren't they? Yeah. But there was still that fact to the experience, like, even your Ryan Babos and stuff. What I was kind of most scared of was, obviously, Galatasaray are a pebble house in Turkey. Like, is there going to be some young up-and-coming Turkish players yeah, that are just yeah. going to be absolute ballers? But for the, the early stages, I thought Rangers dominated the game. For mm -hmm. 0 to 15 minutes, I thought were really bright, created some opportunities. Something that I noticed on corner, CJ, was that Ryan Babo was Martin Conor Goldson. What was that? Uh, yeah, I, didn't get, I didn't get it either. Uh, I, I don't know if it was the zone or what they tried to do, but I think it was a bit of arrogance, <laughs> thinking Big Babo will be able to handle... Connor Goldson, but after, I think it was about the 11th minute of the game where he almost scored and it was deflected, and they did notice that we changed there, so they went, oh, he's actually pretty good in there. Let's not put our winger on the centre half. That, that's Let's change that slightly. So, I thought that was quite hilarious when I was watching it. I know I was thinking the exact same thing. I was like, has Ryan Babel got a leap on him or something? I know he's got a wee <laughs> bit of height, but so is like Borna Barisic. There's some exactly. players that have got height that aren't they renowned and known for their, their headers, which I'm sure will go on to, to be fair, headers. Uh, and guys that aren't renowned for, for their headers, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I thought that was interesting. I was just waiting for the big man to um, to put one in the back of the net. But as you said, they kind of started doubling up on him as well. Yeah. Something as well that I noticed in the first 15 minutes from a negative was uh, I thought Borna was kind of letting Figuli in a wee bit. And yeah. you touched on Figuli in your video, how he'd been, you know, played in the Liga, played in the Premier League and all that sort of stuff, and he was going to be tricky. And I think that in the first 15 minutes, he almost got in a couple of times. Way yep. um, and I was quite, I was quite worried about that. What about yourself? And that's exactly what I was kind of doing, babe. Because when the draw was actually done, uh, believe it or not, but I did put a lot of effort into the preview video, so I actually watch as much as I can. And I just kept watching this guy. I said in the preview, video, he's very like our Ryan Kenny, go right and go left, and that's where he likes to drift during the actual games. He likes to drift from side to side and have a go at fullback, so the fullbacks are never getting comfortable. And I said the whole game is going to be played out there. It's going to be one and lost, and how we control the winged positions, but. 
fair credit to Tavnir, I thought he was absolutely standard. And Barisic, I think he did let Fagouli go away a couple of times. And there was even a time where he was trying to clear it, but Fagouli managed to nip in front of him. But mm -hmm. I think as the game went on, especially in the second half, BB started to tighten up a little bit. I thought Holanda was very vocal well, and they really started to shut that side down. And I think the best bit of compliment you can give to Tavnir is Fagouli came over to the, his side, I think, twice in the first 25 minutes. Didn't he get nothing? Didn't he go back? And that's, exactly. <laughs> There you are. He, he, he'd rather go against Barisic than mm -hmm. Tavernier. That's how good the skipper was yesterday. That was impressive to me. 100%, mate. That's something I noticed as well. For the minute 15 to 30, I thought Rangers started to kind of slow down a wee bit um, with the intensity. But when they started getting a couple corners, I just thought our back four, even our midfield, but in particular, you know, the two centre-halves and even Tavernier making some clearances because... Their deliveries were pretty good last night, oh, yeah. but we were so strong in defending them, and I was I was buzzing about that. You know, like Connor Goldson's had a lot of criticism. I thought he was superb last night. Holanda, for me, reminds me of like a Kevin Thompson, but in the opposite in terms of like a lot of his work doesn't go noticed. It's yeah. quite he quietly goes about his business. He just seems to be in the right positions at the right time. And he just take was last night he was just taking the ball off Falcao. It looked easy, but he needed yep. to kind of be there, didn't he? It was, nah, it was I completely agree. I, I completely agree. I seen a couple of comments firing and saying if Holander had speed, he'd be everything. But if you're a good defender, you didn't need speed. If because you're reading the game, you're in the actual position, you know what I mean? I thought Holander does that very, very well. And I think that's why he works so well with Connor Goldson, because their communication seems to be on point and the amount of I mean, let's be honest, they've got a couple of big boys on that side, but I thought the two centre-halves were excellent. There was a chance as well, I think, from a set piece where it looked like the Galatasaray player had the run on Holanda, but Holanda actually got up, wrestled back and got the heater away, and I thought that was vital because it was still nil nil at that point. But aye, Holanda are big, powerful in the right moments, and I thought the exact same for Connor Goldson, who, yes, made a wee slack pass in the first half that yeah. kind of gave them an opportunity, but... You go ahead and look through the game. Sorry, I'm not going to spoil the, the full recap, but if you look at Conor Goldson's performance in that second half, especially the last five minutes, big number 27, that's what I call him on the, the channel for Galatasaray. He's about eight, five, eight, eight foot five, it's no fair. <laughs> but one of the things that Galatasaray like today is when they are losing or need a goal, he's a uh, PK. Remember what Barcelona used to do when he used to kick out to PK? He'd heater it down, bring in. He's their guy. So you might notice if you watched, if you were able to sit down and concentrate on the game, no bouncing away at the shop, like, I mean, the majority of us, they kept <laughs> going for him for their set yeah. pieces. But every single time, three times in the last four minutes, Conor goes and go above him, go it clear. And that was massive. The game was won because of that aerial duel right there. And Conor goes and won it. Absolutely, mate. Totally agree with that. I thought that um, throughout the first half, Rangers probably didn't test their goalkeeper enough. But there was a couple of promising instances. Um, I remember one with Alfredo Morelos that we've seen so many times where he seems to be breaking through, but this time he chose to pass the ball to Hadji and the move kind of broke down. There was one uh, with Ryan Kent as well, where he kind of got in behind and, f and fluffed his lines a wee bit, but that was promising. The only negative you could probably say is we didn't test the goalie enough, but yeah. as you said, their two centre-halves are such a vital part of their game, and in the first half, we still showed we could, we could get in behind. I noticed as well that I thought Gerard. Um, I remember when we watched uh, watched the Braga game. Like they, we let them go down the wing all the time, yeah. and I think that was just a wee bit of analysis, maybe analysis from the coaching team saying they don't think they've got deliveries into the box. But I noticed last night that we didn't give them any space down the wings because mm. they obviously had a lot of threat, and a lot of the time when the ball was going over the top, I thought their uh, fullbacks were quite high, similar to ours yeah. to a certain yeah. extent, and we were able to get Ryan Kent against like their their centre-halves, and, and it worked brilliantly. Better for us in the second half, obviously, but in the first half, there was promising signs that, that we could we could break the, the deadlock against them. Absolutely, absolutely mate. Especially, you've got to give a wee bit of credit to the opposition. We're not going to go there and blow them away in the first 100%. half. Well, they, were, they were always going to get into the game. They're a Galatasaray side. They've got good players. Yes, they may not, <laughs> might not be spring chickens, but they're experienced players of scope quality. They were going to have the moment in the game, but I was very impressed we didn't allow them to actually snap chaining for that point. And then when we went at half time, I was actually pretty happy on social media and everything. I was very confident, I was content. I was like, right, they've had their spell now. I'm sure we'll come out in the second half. But like you said, Graham Souness was even uh, ranting, well, no ranting, but he was saying quite uh, <laughs> numerous times at half time. Aye, uh, he was basically saying, you need to test that goalkeeper. That is a backup mm -hmm. goalkeeper, Div. You need to test him early. And he saw, what was it, 47 seconds into the second half, Ryan Kent runs down the wing 
beats their big set and a half, whips it, and Morelos. Now, the header isn't great, but it's least on target. And exactly. Ask questions right away. Exactly. And I remember a commentator as well saying at that point, that's the best chance of the match for Rangers. It was tame. Probably wasn't enough pace in the ball, but it was good. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was the first time Ryan Kent was able to fully get after him, get a good ball into the box, and that was a, a sign of things to come. And just to move on to the first goal then, Scotty Arfield's goal, mate. I thought this was an incredible, credible goal. The Rangers yeah. fan point of view, absolutely buzzing with it. With the way that Tav just fires the ball into, I'm not sure if he was originally looking for Hadji or Morelos, but he could have been looking for Morelos. The cleverness of Morelos just to let the ball run. That man, Hadji, in a position for me that's probably strongest, the number 10, he just kind of fell into it, takes a touch. What a beautiful run for Scotty Arfield. And what a finish, mate. Eh? I absolutely, mate. I, I'll kind of watch the come. Again, it starts with Tavernier, of course, at this. I mean, that just sums up his performance. But I just like the fact that when Hadji was in that position, because there was a lot of eyes on him, did we? We all came the scenario and everything that was going around. They are their opposition fans literally call his dad God. Can you imagine going into that game with the pressure? That that would have been scary. But I, I like how brave he was. But when he goes central, he seems to make things tick. And that's the frustration I think some of us Rangers fans have. But the touch is immaculate. The pass is even better. And in Scotty Arfield, we all love him. He will run through a brick wall for us. But sometimes it is that final little bit. It's like the shot, the volley, the last little bit that usually frustrates us. But yeah. fair credit to him. He just looks the goalkeeper right in the eyes, waits for him to dive, and then just passes it by him. So cool and composed. Drops the salute. And so I think we all are right now at that point. Aye, exactly. exactly. The salute was in full force, mate. What a oh, finish. I it. think it's his... What is it? The horn was going Joe 90, wasn't it? Uh, uh, I was like, it was, a dab, it was a dab salute at one point. I, like, <laughs> I think the young boys have been showing Scotty Arfield that. You know what I mean? He's he busted out the dadab. That should be known from this day forth as the dadab. Do you know what I mean? I like that. I like that. I, like but, that. Uh, I think that was his first goal as well for Rangers in European football. Obviously, scored a lot at domestically. Home, yeah. Uh, is it, oh, at home, obviously, he scored against Villarreal, didn't he? At home, yeah. so what a finish from him, buzzing for him. Just let's let's touch on Scotty Arfield then for a wee setting. Huh? He at the start of the year was at the fold, no, hundred percent, but he wasn't a starter, was he? And through injuries, he's burst his way back into there. I think even the manager said in the press conferences, the way that this guy's trained has been immaculate. He says a lot of. Um, players will moan or they'll maybe go on social media and vent which we've seen for okay. <laughs> other clubs players yeah. uh, <laughs> but he didn't he got the heat down he started working hard get himself back in the team and he's scoring goals he's looking fit fitter like he's not he doesn't look fatigued for me um, and he's just incredible at the moment Aye, that fatigue line you just said there perfectly mm-hmm. sums him up because you think there was a 18 month spell there where he didn't have time off he literally went for Rangers to, I'm sorry, what's it called? The Gold Cup or something like that? Sunday they were in um, Canada. They went Canada, and played in that, and then he came back. Yep, and then he went back for Rangers, and then he went straight away and played in two friendlies um, for Canada as well, and came back to us. And he was, <laughs> I mean, he just looked dead and buried. He couldn't run, man. It, it, his legs weren't working, but I think actually coming out the sides actually worked a wee bit well for him. And when he's came in, he's always positive. I've been a wee bit frustrated sometimes with him and Davis, eh, sorry, eh, him and Hadji sometimes make the same run because they want to get him forward, but I feel like that relationship is improving and it's only getting better with the games they played. And for me, he has to be one of the first names in the team sheet because mm-hmm. you're getting everything going forward. But he's also putting on a couple of tackles. Remember, he's tackling Bill Hander yeah. inside the box. It's absolutely to perfection. And he's definitely one that has took his opportunity and rolled with the punches as Gerard sometimes likes to test players to see how they're responding. For me, he's been top notch. 100%. And that's something that's good to see as well. You're seeing players now come into the fold and just come in and do it brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. Jordan Jones had it at the weekend. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if maybe Jones comes back in, I think, yeah, uh, for County, because I think he yeah. deserves it. Um, maybe just with the way the game was gone last night, that's why he never got on. Um, yeah. But even guys like Jordan Jones have come in and, and are doing brilliant, mate. So it's, it's class to see. But should we move on to the second goal then? Oh, do you, do you want to break the second, down, uh, second goal for us it. then? Go for it. I, I can do it, mate. Uh, if you ever want to see what a team goal is, you go back and check that. Anybody that calls us tin pot needs to just look at that and they'll realise what we can actually do with the football. Because it starts off where our goalkeeper passes the corner goal to inside his own six-yard box. He passes the Tav nearly inside his own box. And then 22 passes later, 26, it's 20 seconds later, sorry, Tavnir is then in the opposition box, dropping... Just two centre halves and rattle it in the back. And it was beautiful. Though. Everyone was involved with me. It went for Tav to Morelos, who again wasn't at his best, but he's link up playing the two goals. 
we're vital. We find Haji, Haji to Kamara, Kamara to Ked, Ked to BB, back to BB, back to Ked. But it was just amazing to watch me, and it was just the football you want to see. But I uh, have to give full credit to Tavernier. He starts that inside his own box. 20 seconds later, he's in the six yard line. <laughs> and, and, and I just think that's funny, mate. You know what I mean? That's who right back. It's exactly. 1 0 up versus Galatasaray, and a chance for all that moolah. Who's the furthest man forward in the right position? <laughs> the right back. I mean, that just shows you how much he owns that entire side in the park. What a performance in his goal. Mm-hmm. Bro, love hundred percent. What a finish. What a finish. A header, something he's not really known for as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is, is just good to see. I think that's got to be something now that the, the coaches have been maybe working on because it's happening religiously now. I think that's oh, three really. goals in the last... Um, like out with the penalties, but it's three goals maybe in the last six games where he's just arrived at the back post and scored. Yeah. And he yeah. knew he's done it in Europe. There was even a chance in the first half where I don't think he gave Alfie the shout and he's shout. tried to head it down when he's, yeah. he's coming in on it. So surely that's something that the, the coaches have been working on, just adding another string to our bow. And see, to be fair, see the cross that came in, it was as if it went into orbit, wasn't it? Uh, it just went... Uh, uh, uh. It went so high into the air and then it just it fell in the six yard box and that man Tav was there to score. His goal return's incredible, his assists are incredible, as you said, mate. He owns that right hand side. It's beautiful. Yeah, to it does, mate. He yeah, yeah, does it all to defend and attack and all game. And even throughout the game, mate, he was still making 60 yard runs trying to get in behind the opposition. And that's frightening. You just didn't get that for right backs, especially in Scottish football, the level of consistency. That man's got the top of the actual cross, what we're saying there, Dave. The way they actually went up in the air, I thought, oh, dear. I was like, damn, that was a good move. Dude. The goalie's going to uh, catch that. But the goalie didn't come out for it. And then the you just saw Tavernier rising like a salmon. Bush, there you are. And regarding his head, and yes, he doesn't necessarily score headers, but he's usually always that out ball. You think about it, Alan McGregor. That he always does, right I mean. Say, I... That, that's our out ball all the time. So he has got that in his game. And I love the fact that Gerrard's went, you've got that, mate. You're getting there. Get in the box and make it count, and I love that, genuinely that's, love that. That's a great wee point then, I never even thought of that, like, yeah. that is just Rangers all the way back, last season and the season before, yeah. Alan McGregor, goal kicks, always out to Tav, always out to Tav, he wins a header, heater, heater, starts the attack, man, unbelievable, but in the last 30 minutes, I think we just kind of saw the game out, we had opportunities to score yeah. again, didn't we, like, but we obviously did, we didn't take our chance, I had 3-0 on as well, I had 3-0, I, I, uh, I had 2-1 as well, so, aye, no, aye, one, two, aye. one, there you go, boom. Aye, aye, aye. But I thought the 3 0 was on more than the 2 1. And see, even when they oh, scored a goal, I've not had a chance to kind of watch it back. Obviously, it's a, it's annoying, do you know what I mean? Because we, we wanted yeah. to keep a clean sheet. I don't think that they maybe warranted that goal. So even after they scored, for me, mate, I wasn't too worried because we looked comfortable throughout the game. Even Golson in that last 15 minutes. Oh, outstanding. Superb again, mate, at winning, winning balls and just making things look easy. I think yeah. that's potentially his downfall sometimes. He yeah. finds things way too easy sometimes. He maybe loses a wee bit of concentration, but it's happening way less often now for Big yeah, Golson. I, um, but he was I, unbelievable in the last 15 minutes or so. I was, mate. I, I think you're completely spot on. After they scored, yes, it was nippy bum time, as we like to say on my channel, because it was because we've all been there and seen that. But you think about the game, they didn't have one other chance. McGregor yeah. wasn't forced into making that McGregor save. There was no that, oh, shit. Because we just managed the game. We saw it. I thought Cedric came in, by the way, by getting, and he held the ball up a couple of times very well, marshaled the defence um, pretty well in that as well. But you just look at the shape and the work rate of the boys. The two centre-halves really stood out in the last seven or so minutes of this game. And uh, it was a nearly faultless performance in the second half of our base centre-half. Yes, we conceded, but even look at the way they scored, mate. It's a, it's a corner where we will be disappointed with the marking, but Jacko's on the line. If McGregor doesn't save it, he's probably clearing it. I think he was, uh... I bet if McGregor, people were saying we were a couple like, oh, McGregor should have left it. If your goalkeeper's leaving that, I mate, know. That, that's, yeah. and that was in the back of it, you're like, what's he doing? He's got <laughs> to make a move for it. But I, uh, it was a wee bit disappointing to concede, but I was not like, oh, shit. Worried. I, I wasn't. I really wasn't. If I'm being honest, like I said in yesterday's video, I think the 2 1 sco- scoreline actually flatters Galatasaray. Really? I, I, I agree with that. that. I agree uh, with that 100%. But now Rangers move on to the Europa league group stages that's happening soon like we're recording this just before it's been drawn so obviously we don't know who that's going to be yet but you you feeling confident for that mate i am mate just the last i mean last season if you look at the group that we got that was the group of death wasn't it when you looked at the actual who was in there you had young boys champions league level team you had porto you had fire you're looking at them you're going what 
is happening here, man. Mm -hmm. But then we saw we done our record is immaculate. What was we lost one in nineteen home games in Europe under Gerard, and that was to Bayer Leverkusen. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? We're all right there. You know what I mean? So I, I'm confident I'll take one anyone. I think anyone. it's I think it's class as well how Rangers have just been absolute mavericks and led the way for Scotland. And yep. no, I don't know if it's official yet, but it's looking like. Scotland are going to get an automatic spot, which is class for Rangers, do you know what I mean? So when yeah. we get back in the Champions League, we'll just go straight in. Do you, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's, it's been unbelievable how we're able to climb our way back up to that and, and get a, an automatic space. I know it's not maybe official yet, but it looks kind of that it's going to happen, man. Absolutely. I mean, you just look at the coefficient, the points that's that's happened since we came in the league. I think we dropped to 29th or something like that as a league, but now mm -hmm. we're doing to 12, and that's currently rising because obviously Rangers, Celtic um, are through now. I, uh, Mullerwell and Aberdeen had a pretty decent run in that as well, Aye. getting by a wee bit, so it all kind of boosted up. But you look at the trajectory where it started to just hammer in the right direction, it's when Stephen Gerrard came to this football club, mate, and what a job he's done in European football. He seems to just get the tactics absolutely spot on. He reads the game so well, and I don't know... If it's a different style of play and the fact that they're not needing to play against 10 men all the time, but the players seem to relish that challenge mentally and it's, it's brilliant to see they just don't fear anyone. And I think that's led by the likes of Ryan mm. Kidd because that guy doesn't care who he's up against. Do you know what I mean? It yeah, could be a backup player at Hamilton or it could be a starter for Porto. It doesn't matter to him. He always plays the same way and I think mm. that's infectious to the team. And that's why we're seeing what we're, what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Get Ryan Kent a one on one with anybody and that's his. Oh. Bread and butter, one hundred percent. Square up the defender, and he's away. We beautiful way, wee bits mate. of skill. Either way, I both footed. That's what I love about our wingers. Not to divert a wee bit. They're both footed. Do you know what I mean? If Hadji plays out in the right as well, he can come in the left and come out in the right. You know, a player's truly two footed when they can go into a corner with a weak foot. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I would have major anxiety if I had to go oh, into a corner for SYT or whatever with my <laughs> left foot. It would just yeah. be a pirola. Right into uh, the middle. Do you know what I mean? I think I'd uh, fall, um, mate. I don't think I'd have to balance. I'd just fall. <laughs> Penalty. <laughs> just have to try and toe poke it or whatever and, <laughs> into the area. But no, that's yeah. class. Um, so I am, I'm feeling confident as well. Hopefully we get a good draw. Uh, there's a lot of people wanting the big teams or whatever, but patch them for me. I, I, give, give me the easiest teams. Give us the easiest route. Because Rangers in the last few seasons have had a tough time with, with teams, but we've made it look easy. But yeah, yeah I think we'll end it there, mate. No worries. Thanks very much for coming on. No, I really appreciate it. Feels, uh, cheers for the invite. I'm sure there'll be many more in the future. And hello, Sharptive's channel. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. Right, Trips. Thanks very much for watching. See you again in the next one. And we're out. And stop.